Allah's not just the best of creators, Sam. Uh, Islam, yeah. Islam teaches that Allah is also the best of deceivers. You got it. The best of all who deceive, and deceivers. Now, just to remind you from a Christian perspective, the greatest deceiver of them all is not Yahweh God. That would be blasphemy. Mm -hmm. It's Satan. Revelation and that's why this point is on our list, you right? This it, is yeah. an insult to the Almighty. This it's is an insult travesty. to the creator of the universe to say that of all deceivers, it's one, yeah, yeah. it's one thing to say of all creators, God is the best of those who yeah. create. To say that of all deceivers, God is the best of those who yeah. deceive, that's some scary stuff. Utter, utter blasphemy and a travesty against the absolutely righteous and perfect character of the God of the Bible. Because Revelation 12, 9 says of Satan, he is the one who deceives the whole world. And Jesus Christ, our Lord, in John 8, 44, says that Satan, the devil, is the father of lies. Not God, but Satan, right? But the Quran in chapter 3, verse 54, and it's also found in chapter 8, verse 30. Chapter 3, verse 54, and chapter 8, verse 30 says this. But they were being deceptive. And Allah was deceptive, for Allah is the best of all deceivers. Now, some will say, well... I've read multiple Quran translations and it doesn't read the way you do. Well, the reason why it doesn't read the way I just read it is because most translations are too ashamed to translate what the Arabic actually says. The word makir and khayrul makirin. Khayrul makirin means the best of all those who commit makir. The Arabic word makir means what exactly? Now, I don't need to come up with my own definition. I'm going to read to you what... Lane's Arabic English Lexicon says, which you can actually consult online, Lane's Arabic English lexi Lexicon defines makr as he practiced deceit, guile, or circumvention, desiring to do another a foul, an abominable or an evil action, clandestinely or without his knowledge, whence it had proceeded. Lane's Arabic English Lexicon tells you it's deceit, it's guile, to do someone else a foul, something abominable, and an evil action. An action. Now another lexical source defines it this way. Mim kaf ra, makr, to practice deceit, or guile, or circumvention, practice evasion, or illusion, to plot, to exercise art, or craft, or cunning, act with policy, practice stratagem. So this word always has a negative connotation throughout the Quran. You will never find the word makr used in a positive sense. It's always used in the context of someone deceiving another, <clears throat> conniving another, you know, uh, scheming against another with the purpose of either misleading him or causing him harm. And here the Quran says Allah is the best of those who practice makr. So we wouldn't, uh, just to clarify, we wouldn't have a problem with translating it as scheming or plotting or planning yes. the way uh, uh, most of our Western translations will translate this, provided you understand that it's the sort of scheming and plotting and planning that involves deceiving people, right? Yes, exactly. It's not just, hey, I'm scheming to throw someone a birthday party here, right? I'm <laughs> scheming to do some really bad, nasty stuff to trick and deceive people. And this is what they're saying that Allah is best at. You know, you know what's amazing about that word, makr? You know what the Quran says about <clears throat> Allah's makr? It hmm. says the only people who feel safe from his makr are disbelievers. Even the believers who know better know that they're not safe from the makr of Allah. Chapter 7, verse 99. Notice what it says, 799, using the word makr. Then do they feel secure from the deception or the scheming of Allah? No one feels secure from the deception or scheming of Allah except the disbelievers. So that means believers know better than to feel secure from Allah's makr or his deception or scheming. And so any Muslim out there who says, oh, no, come on, Allah is not a deceiver. He's not out to get me, this and that. He's in trouble, according to the Quran. He's, he, he's not even a real believer. Right? Yeah, exactly. Interesting. And by the way, how did this affect the early Muslim community? How did this affect the Muslims when they thought about getting into paradise? Oh, yeah. Well, there's a narration attributed uh, to Abu Bakr where he was about to die. And he says, even if I had one foot in paradise, I would still not feel safe from the makr, the scheming or deception of Allah, even if I had one foot in paradise. Now, this is... This is this the isn't, first, this isn't this a is the first here, rightly yeah. guided caliph, uh -huh. Muhammad's best friend, one of the ten that Muhammad guaranteed paradise to, Muhammad's father-in-law, saying this. And this is why we bring this point up. You're talking about the Almighty who is perfect, and the revelations in the Quran that describe him led his greatest followers, led yeah. Allah's greatest followers to be so terrified of him that they would think, 
if I had one foot in paradise. So, I mean, imagine this, Sam. You're walking into Islamic paradise. You look over there. You see your virgins. They're all waiting for you. They're all lined up. They're waiting to give you an eternity of deflowering virgins. And you got one foot in paradise. Up, oh, Allah might snatch you out of there and say, ah, just kidding. I was fooling you. Now you're going to hell. I was just deceiving you to mess with you. And guess what? That's the sort of God you have to believe in. And you even find this in other ways. We, we, we already talked in a previous program about why Muslims believe that Christians believe in Jesus' death by crucifixion. Why do Christians believe that Jesus died by crucifixion? Because Allah deceived us, right? Now, why did Allah deceive people into believing that Jesus died by crucifixion? There's no reason. There's no basis for it. All you can say is, Allah just decided to trick and deceive you. Precisely. Well, if, if Allah just took... And by the way... Even Jesus' followers, who were good Muslims according to the Quran, came to believe that he died by crucifixion. So Allah will trick and deceive even people who believe his prophets. And if Allah will trick and deceive even people who believe in his prophets, how do you Muslims know he's not tricking and deceiving you? Exactly. If you believe that Allah went to the Jews and said, hmm, I'm going to trick and deceive these guys into believing that Jesus died by crucifixion. Ha, ha, ha. No reason at all. I'm just going to trick and deceive them. How do you know Allah didn't say, hmm, I'm going to send Muhammad and trick and deceive these Arabs into believing that he's a prophet. Once you believe in a God who is the greatest of deceivers, right? this is like Loki. <laughs> this is like right, Loki yeah, in yeah. Norse mythology. Ha, ha, ha. I can trick and mess with everybody. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Mischievous, a mischievous yeah, deity. Yeah. Uh, once you have an omnipotent deceiver as part of your theology, you don't know what to believe. You don't know, oh, if, you're, you don't know if you're watching us right now. Maybe Allah is tricking you into thinking we're here telling you uh, all these reasons uh, to reject Muhammad as a prophet. You don't know. You don't know if you're a Muslim and you accept the Quran as the word of God. Yeah, see, that, what, what scared me is the thought of an omnipotent deceiver because if he's all-powerful, then no one can thwart his deception. Mm -hmm. see, that's scary. 